Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're still in Hong Kong, so we're going to have a look at yet another of Hong Kong's 30 or so craft breweries that they have now. So for this one, we're going to go to Young Master Brewery, who were one of the very, very first, and uh, they're actually the most decorated and largest by volume craft beer producer here in Hong Kong at the moment. So I'm curious to see how this beer turns out. So this is another one that was recommended to me by the guys at HK Brewcraft. It is called the Hat. Mo Shung. So they do lots of different versions of this beer. It's the basic. I think basically they have an imperial stout base recipe, and they just do different things to it. So this particular version of Hat Mo Shung is the double chocolate imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels, and it comes in at 9.6 percent. There were some different versions of this that were aged. I think there was some in rum barrels. There was some in scotch barrels. I think they had ones that had you know uh, Mexican chilies and stuff like this added to them as well. So basically, I think they've got this this recipe that they just muck around with a lot, kind of like a few other breweries it's Nerd Brewing in Sweden that this one really reminds me of, they've got a very good base recipe for a stout that they just kind of mess around with actually, but very curious to see how this one turns out, as I said one of the oldest craft breweries in Hong Kong, so hopefully it's another good one, and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward, all the usual links are in the description below, that's the brewery website Website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Young Master Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. I will make one for the Hong Kong beers that I'm reviewing for you, and hopefully I can add to it again in the fairly near future. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, for the first part, on to my brewery notes. So to tell you a little bit about the Young Master Brewery. So Young Master was founded back in 2013 by Rohit Dugar, who is from New Delhi over in India. So he moved to, from New York to Hong Kong back in 2011, and he was working in the banking sector for Goldman Sachs before he decided to quit and found his own microbrewery. So he was joined at the brewery by German brewer Ulrich Altbauer, who had an extensive experience of brewing, having brewed, I think, in Shanghai and Beijing in mainland China, and he was, a, he was their master brewer originally, but sadly, he died in 2016. And the current brew team is Edwin and Brian, who've both worked for the company for a good number of years and I think in the in the um, in the early years they were actually basically under the wings of Uli. Um, but their first brewery was in Apleis Chow and uh, this facility had a small 10 hectolitre brew house which acted as their main production facility until around mid 2016. They opened up a new brewery in Wong Chuk Hang with a 40 hectolitre brew house from Gate A in Germany and they also had a larger barrel aging area and also a, a fodder which was used for producing sour beers as well and this was the first fodder that any brewery in Asia had actually so a very pioneering brewery this one uh, but today they're producing around 50 15,000 litres of beer per month and uh, they're the largest craft brewery as I mentioned by volume in Hong Kong and they're the most decorated brewery as well. They've won a hell of a lot of awards and you can see them uh, listed on the website there. But as of June 2019 they've produced 104 different types of beer and they now employ in the region of 20 different people as well. So yeah, one of the oldest craft breweries in Hong Kong and uh, one of the most diverse I guess in terms of their, uh, their beer sortiments and things like that as well. It's really cool to see that even sour beer are starting to spread over here to Asia and hopefully that's something that spreads over to places like Japan and stuff like that as well. So yeah, from what I gather, the craft beer scene in Hong Kong was non-existent about five years ago and now you've got breweries like this who are buying fodders and stuff like that to brew sour beers, so very exciting times ahead. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website in the description below and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that too and you can go on Untapped and Rate Beer and check out all the listings of the different beers that they have. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one there. There you can see the Hak Mo Shung in the, the little Chinese pictograms. I'm not sure exactly what the word is you use for the, the Chinese characters. Since my girlfriend is Japanese, of course, I would know them as kanjis. Um, but yeah, nicely presented beer, this one. The other different versions of this tend to just have different colours for the characters and stuff. And there you can see the young master symbol, the two sort of dancing legs on the top of the bottle there. 
um, are, you know, that is the main symbol that these guys use for the brewery. And um, the thing I'd say, the Young Master apparently is an old sort of Hong Kong legend, if you like, and they like that sort of hard-working but playful spirit, if you like, that they said represented Hong Kong. But as I mentioned, this one is a 9.6% Imperial Stout, 45 IBUs apparently, the double chocolate Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels version. So, yeah, curious to see how this turns out. Once again, my cousin is on the, uh, the bottle opening duty with his lighter, so let's go for it. Yep, so bottle's open then. Got this one open a little bit quicker than the other ones. So let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So as you can see when this guy pours out, this is this is a bit of a monster. This is going to be a monster by the looks of it. You can see nice dark ebony rosewood colour there, which is pretty much exactly what you would expect from this style. If I hold it up to the light, there's not even a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to this one. This one is completely dark and ebony. There's a solid, I would say, half finger of a frothy, quite dark tan head on this one, to be honest with you. Um, it looks very, very nice. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it looks really very nice and pretty much what you would expect from, uh, from an Imperial Stout, so nothing too surprising about this one in terms of its appearance. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. I think this is going to be a bit of a monster. Yeah. So, straight away with this, you've got a... You can smell with this beer, there's a real fight in this one between the roasty black malts and the sweet chocolate. You can really feel these two things just going head to head. The chocolate is really interesting. There's a really intri a really nice and quite intricate balance here between the kind of more milky chocolatey notes out of this one, but also the dark, high kind of cocoa chocolates as well. You know, the 80-90% cocoa ones and also the lighter, more lactosey, milky chocolates in there. It's a really interesting aroma, that. Underneath, though, you can really smell a nice, dark, roasty black malt coming out of the beer. This one almost smells a little bit like a kind of chocolate milkshake or something like that. You know, it's got a little bit of an almost Nesquicky powder type thing. You know, the stuff you use to make the chocolate milk. It really has an element of that to it, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, definitely a nice roasty black malt backbone to this one. Some of that kind of milkshake chocolate powder in there. Some sweeter milky chocolates. A little bit of a... Um, you know, a little bit of a darker high cocoa, 80-90% um, note in there as well, which is, is kind of crazy to be honest. It, it's really, um, the, the complexity to the chocolate aromas in this beer is absolutely lovely, but it does say it's a double chocolate stout to be fair. Um, so yeah, really there's something to me that just, this one just smells like chocolate milk or something like that. Really nice. Um, I think there's a little touch of a kind of woody note to this one, a little bit of a nutty note in there as well, which, you know, you would get a little bit of that from the barrel aging. You can smell a little bit of the, um, you know, you can smell a little bit of a kind of oaky quality coming out of this one. I think a little bit of vanilla. I'm not getting too much in the way of a whiskey note out of this beer. I think the chocolate and the roasty malts are just a little bit strong for that, to be honest. Yeah, it really is. No matter how deeply you take this beer in, um, it's got this little bit, it really has this almost chocolate milky quality, but the more deeply you breathe it in, the more it leans towards that kind of, um, you know, the more it really leans towards the roasty toasty side of things in my mind. But the aroma out of this beer is absolutely beautiful. One of the really, uh, one of the more complex stouts that I've come across in recent times, in fact. So, yeah, um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, then, I think there's a little bit, I mean, there is a little bit of earthiness to this one, maybe a little touch of a, a herbal quality, but that's very, very minimal. Mainly an earthy hop coming out of this one. I suspect that there's English hops in here, maybe Kent Goldings or Fugles, more likely Fugles, to be honest. And, um, yeah, it, or there could, you know, it could just be American hops, to be honest. Um, yeah, but it has a really nice, uh, earthy, hoppy quality to it, to be honest. Um, in terms of fruitiness, I think there's a little um, sort of slightly sharpish, raisiny note to this one. It just has a little bit of a, a kind of fruity, berry sort of sharpness to it as well, which is really nice. But yeah, a lovely aroma to it, this one. So if you get the chance to try this beer, you know, take a good bit of time to enjoy the aroma and you won't be, um, you really won't be disappointed with this one. So let's get on to the tasting of this beer then. So just to make sure I give it the exactly correct name. So this one is the Hackmall Shung uh, 
The double chocolate Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels, 9.6%. Uh, so as I say, lots of different versions of this beer, but this one I think is going to be an absolute monster. So yeah, let's get stuck into this one. The Hack Motion from Young Master Brewery here in Hong Kong. Let's get stuck in. Slanja School. That's an absolute monster of a beer. Um, it's not quite, I'll say in first impressions, it's not quite as sweet as I was expecting it to be. Um, but it really is very, very good. It's, it's very, very well balanced, I have to say. Um, I suspect if this wasn't barrel aged, you'd probably get a little bit more of the sweetness out of it. I have to admit, with barrel aging, I'm always in two minds as to whether it's a good thing or not because um, I think it sort of takes the mouth feel of the beer, it just thins it out a little bit in my mind. But I will say, this is a really, really impressive Imperial Stout and if this is what these guys are producing, I definitely need to try a few more of their beers. So yeah, big thumbs up to Young Master Brewery for this, they've done a terrific job with it. Yeah. That's, you know, that's really damn good actually. Um, once you get over the initial kind of impact of this beer, um, you get a bit of roasty toastiness in the beginning when you take it in right enough. But once you get over that kind of roasty toasty quality that this beer has, um, you know, it really starts to smooth out and sweeten out. This beer, it has almost, there is almost like a, there, there's just a really kind of smooth quality to this one. It's not, um, you know, you can feel it's almost like wheat, but obviously I don't think they'll have used wheat in this beer, to be honest. I think they've probably used a good bit of oatmeal in this as well, to be honest. I think it's got that really oatmeal-y kind of smoothness to it, and there's a hell of a lot of chocolate just kind of embedded in that, which is nice. Yeah, I think there's a lot of oatmeal in this beer, in the original version of it. So yeah, you can feel that nice oatmeal-y smoothness, just blanket in the middle of your tongue. And the further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel the middle of your palate dries out a little bit, but that smoothness really, really stays there. You can feel some of the roasty, toasty black malts pushing their way through as well, which is nice. Um, and the chocolate is, again, really blended. There's a little bit of the kind of milkier chocolate in there. Um, and then you've also got some of the higher cocoa uh, percentage chocolates, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s and stuff like that. You can feel a little bit of that pushing its way out in the flavour too. And um, there's definitely a sort of brown sugary element to this beer as well. And that will be from the bourbon, pardon me, from the bourbon barrel aging that they've used here. You can definitely get a little bit of that American bourbon note. And as I've said on the channel before, I always find that the American bourbons are a little bit sweeter compared with the Scotch whiskies that I'm used to. The American uh, bourbons always just lean a little bit more towards the um, towards the brown sugar side of things. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it does always seem to be the case when the Americans take a beer style or a whiskey or whatever, they always make it just that little bit sweeter. They're very sweet toothed, the Americans, I think. But yeah, this one, really, you can pick out that nice um, bourbon whiskey uh, note to this one just kind of underneath. Uh, the woody elements I think come out a little bit further uh, into the aftertaste with the beer as well and if you move a bit further forward on that you've got a little touch of a uh you know you've got you've definitely got a little touch of a vanilla quality to this one as well. But yeah that's a lovely uh, it's just got a whole this is definitely one of the more complex beers that you're going to come across and um it really just it just works very very well, um, you know. I have to admit, where I, I heard that the, the Hong Kong brew scene was in its infancy a little bit, you know, five years old. But to see stuff like this being produced already is very very promising. I think you know Hong Kongers are in for a treat over the next couple of years because when you get about ten years into having a, a craft beer broom, that's when your brewers really start to get in gear. But it seems that the Hong Kongers have um, kind of skip that part if you like, they really are producing some very good stuff already. Um, but yeah, I really like the malt base in this one and how it's uh, how it's going together, it's it's terrific that, so you know, try this one for yourself. Um, as I said, I suspect with this beer that the, the bourbon barrel aging has sort of thinned the mouthfeel a little bit. I'd be very curious to try the sort of original version, the unbarrel aged version of this, because I think it would just be that little bit thicker and smoother, but as it stands, it really is um, very, very nice actually. 
Hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there in the back corners of your tongue. As you move further forward, it just kind of, some of the bitterness of that goes away and it, it just smooths out. There's maybe a little touch of herbal quality in there. And um, going by the flavours of the beer, I'm not so sure if there was English hops in it. I was kind of sure with the aroma, but I'm not so sure from the flavours that there are English hops in here because that earthiness isn't quite darker and um, ashy enough almost to be like Ken Golding's or... Um, or Fugos or something like that. I suspect there's probably American hops in this at a push. It will be some Australian hops that are in here. Um, but yeah, as you come further forward, you get a little bit of that herbal quality. At the front corners of the tongue, you can pick out just a little touch of floralness. And then round the very front curve of the palate, the beer is just a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy in my mind. So yeah. Um, it's, that's nice just how it goes together. The fruity side of this beer is quite nice too. I do wonder if there's a little bit of will you met in this. Um, just from the way some of the fruity notes are coming out. So as I always say, just behind the front curve of the palate, you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, um, this one has a little bit of a... There's definitely a little bit of a figgy note to it for me, that light but still juicy fig. The fruitiness doesn't really have any sharpness to it in my mind. It's not really got that kind of raisiny, plummy sharpness that you can sometimes get. It's quite a juicy, figgy, kind of candied fruit note. There's maybe a little bit of a black curranty note the further you go into your aftertaste in there, maybe a little bit of blackberry or something like that. I do suspect that they've perhaps used a little bit of, uh, of Willamette in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, if they'd used a little bit of that in here. And that would also account for a little bit of the way the earthy quality comes out as well. But this is a beautiful, beautiful beer, this one. So in my mind, it gets a big thumbs up. The way that you've got um, the, the kind of, I, th I do suspect there's oatmeal in here, the way the oatmeal and the sort of chocolatey flavours work together. And then you've got the bourbon barrels the woody side of the beer too, um, the way you've got this infusion in the middle of your palate but also the sweet chocolate and the nice little subtleties from the hops and fruit. This is one of these beers where it's all about how it just everything blends together but it does it beautifully so big thumbs up, uh, thumbs up rather not thumbs up, you know thinking of Australian uh, flip flops, um, you know a big thumbs up to uh, to Young Master Brewery for this one. I'd be very curious to try some of the other beers. It'd be cool to try one of their sour beers at some point too. So hopefully I can get back out here at some point and, you know, have uh, have a look at those. But, you know, as it stands, this is a beautiful beer. And if this is what you're getting in Hong Kong these days, very bright future ahead for the Hong Kong craft beer industry. I think it'd be very exciting to come out here and just watch it evolve, actually. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, um, You know, for me, I would describe this beer as being at the very top end of mid-bodied. Um, and, you know, mouthfeels are an interesting thing. I have found this a little bit. You know, um, I've got a good bit of experience with the Japanese craft beers. I must have reviewed about 100 of those now, just because my girlfriend is Japanese. Um, and, you know, I always find this interesting when you go to other countries and you start to notice things. You get these little niches about the beers from different countries. And I'm starting to notice it with the Hong Kong beers. These are similar to the Japanese ones, and the mouthfeels are a little bit lighter than uh, I would be used to uh, in Denmark and Sweden. Um, and I said the same about the American beers, and I think it's one of these things, just because it's a, a very hot, almost tropical climate, actually, I don't know if it's correct to call it a tropical climate here in Hong Kong, the mouthfeel is just a little bit lighter than you'd get from uh, from Scandinavia in this style, but it works really nicely. So I would definitely say this is the sort of top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of uh, full-bodied. The carbonation is very smooth in this one. It's got a good balance between a sort of almost creamy, smooth mouthfeel and a little bit of an oiliness in there. Um, so the, the mouthfeel really just works for this beer quite nicely. The malt base, I'd say, it, again, it's one of these ones. It has a little bit of roastiness. It has the smoother notes from the woodiness and the, the oatmeal in there and also a little bit of sweetness as well. There's a little bit of everything in this one, which is great. Nice little bit of bitterness coming both from the hops uh, and from the black malts and the malt base. You know, it's said on the bottle it's 45 IBUs, which is a good level for this type of beer. Um, so like I say, it says it's a double chocolate stout, but it doesn't lean too much towards the sweet side of things. You're not going to get an Omnipoil uh, level sweetness out of this beer. And you've also got some lovely juicy fruity qualities in this one as well. So yeah, have a try of this beer for yourself and just uh, see what you think. It really is uh, beautifully done. And it's, it, I'd say this is one of the kind of thicker um, 
barrel aged imperial stouts that I've had over the last little while so yeah you know have a go at this one for yourself and just see what you think and I do suspect I'd be curious as I said I'd be curious to try this one in its original form because I've always found that barrel aging just takes the mouthfeel uh, down a little bit and thins it out so maybe this one would actually match the um, you know it would actually match the the Europe the, the Scandinavian level um, mouthfeel, uh, Scandinavian level thickness if you like, if it wasn't barrel aged. So yeah, hopefully I can try a few more different versions of this one uh, in the future. But as it stands, it's a lovely, lovely beer and I'm glad that I got to review this and I hope you guys are enjoying my Hong Kong reviews. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one is the double chocolate stout barrel aged version of the Hakmo Shung from Young Master Brewery here in Hong Kong. A lovely beer this, and this is definitely one of the breweries to watch going forward. If you're watching from outside of Hong Kong or across Asia or in Europe or whatever, this is most, I suspect that this is most the, the most likely brewery that you're going to see over in Europe. I would love to see them at Kope, uh, the McKellar Beer Celebration at some point, or in Sweden too. Uh, it would be great to come across this brewery again at some point in the future. And I think this is the most likely uh, Hong Kong brewery to get out there a bit because of um, the owner's connections and things I would guess. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. A beautiful beer and I'm glad that I got to review this for you. If you like your, uh, if you like, you know, a sort of kind of well-balanced imperial stout, this is one I think that's going to tick a lot of boxes for you. So yeah, have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. So this one, as I said, is the double chocolate imperial stout barrel aged version of the Hack, uh, the Hack Motion from Young Master Brewery here in Hong Kong. A lovely imperial stout this and a brewery definitely to watch for the future. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Young Master Brewery and hopefully I can try a few more beers from these guys in the future. Be awesome to try some from their sour programme. They do have a Scotch ale as well and I love reviewing Scotch ales from different countries. So hopefully I can try their, their uh, Scotch ale at some point soon too. But thanks again for watching, check out some of the Hong Kong beers, come here and visit the city, it's really nice and uh, yeah, have a go at this brewery, one to watch for the future. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, been repeating myself a lot so I do apologise. Cheers.